Hello everyone, and welcome to this latest video from me, Minty Squids, and this is not a reaction video, this is kind of a breakdown thing, for the first trailer for the Fallout TV series from Amazon Prime, uh, and other people. I forgot who's doing this show, it's Jonathan Nolan, Jonathan Nolan, from Jonathan Nolan, uh, Todd Howard, Jonathan Nolan, who's the brother of Christopher Nolan, Todd Howard, the guy who's in charge of Bethesda, and has basically been creating the Fallout games since Fallout 3, and other stuff like that. Anyway... That's beyond the point. I have already seen this trailer multiple times, and basically there was a lot of trailers that launched, or that came out like last week, the week before that, uh, at a Comic-Con, and, and I believe Brazil, and I was not able to do reactions to them because I was not expecting them to come out, because I was not up on that, so I had watched them ahead of time. But I wanted to do a breakdown video for Fallout specifically because you all in the community wanted, uh, wanted this, and because I love the Fallout franchise so much. Now, I will say going into this, I did write notes for the video, so I will be basically pausing this at, at various points, talking off my notes and stuff, and basically going over some of the cool things that I pointed out in the video, or that I saw in this trailer. Um, however, I am not the most well-versed in Fallout lore. I have gone down some rabbit holes at times to look up different vaults in the games, to look up the timeline, and I have played uh, every game since 3. I have not beaten every game since 3. I have only actually beaten Fallout New Vegas. That is my favorite one, though. New Vegas is great. Um, I think I actually beat New Vegas. I might have gotten to the very end and didn't beat it yet, but I'm pretty sure I beat New Vegas. Either way, doesn't matter. <clears throat> I've been playing Fallout since Fallout 3, uh, not when the game came out, a little bit after that. So I am well-versed in Fallout, but not, like, well, well-versed in Fallout. So a lot of the stuff I did kind of get from, like, various articles that I will link down below, uh, wiki pages <laughs> and various other things, but it's stuff I want to talk about as well, because I love Fallout and I want to talk about it. So without any further ado and without any further introduction, let's just get into the trailer and uh, start talking about it, okay? So in 3, 2, 1, here's the trailer. So the first thing here in the trailer is we see Vault 33. Now, in the games, there are 122 vaults that were designed by a company named Vault Tech and then later co-opted by a shadow government called the Enclave. They're bad guys in the game, though you can also join them if you want to because, of course, freedom of choice. But either way, the vaults were basically designed to keep humanity safe, quote-unquote, from any type of apocalypse that happened like this. However, when they were taken over by the Enclave, a lot of them, 105 of them actually, were turned into giant social experiments to see how humanity would react to certain situations. A lot of these are terrible, just absolutely terrible, though there are some that are really funny. And you come across various vaults in the games as well. Vault 33 was made specifically for the show. However, we do not know if it was a social experiment type thing, or if it was a control vault. We do not know. We will find that out in the show. It is looking like it might be a, a experiment vault, but we'll, we'll see. But either way, this is the main character as well. Her name is Lucy. She is played by Ella Purnell, who is a great up-and-coming actress that has been in a lot of things recently, including Arcane, which you can watch my reaction series up here for that. Jonathan Nolan, of course, is the brother home. of Christian Nolan, as I mentioned in my rant at the beginning. All dwellers are an endangered species. So we're going to pause it here as well. So this is multiple things all at once. So first off, that's a Rad Roach. Rad Roaches are great. They are one of the common enemies in the Fallout franchise. They are, as you can see, really heavily irradiated roaches. <laughs> this is what they are. They're big, big cockroaches that have been heavily irradiated. They're cool. However, the other big thing is, is the location of this show. This show takes place around Los Angeles. Vault 33 has been said to be around Santa Monica. We saw Santa Monica Pier. We saw the, the Ferris wheel there. The cool thing about this is that the first Fallout game that was released for the PC, it was like a top-down, isometric, like, strategy game, took place in the L.A. area as well. Like, more, more in L.A., like, actual city L.A. and the surrounding wasteland there. However, that game took place in the year 2161, which was roughly 84 years after the bombs fell and 135 years before the show. So the show, canonically, is the furthest thing in the timeline in the year 2296, which is nine years after Fallout 4. Also, the show has been confirmed by Todd Howard and by Jonathan Nolan to be canon to the games. <laughs> so, whatever happens in the show will be referenced in the game somewhere. Where? Probably in Fallout 5, whenever that happens. So we haven't seen the West Coast or this area of the country for 
honestly 135 years at this point. So a lot could have happened and a lot could have changed since the events of Fallout 1, including the vaults that were over there could have opened, could have, you know, destroyed themselves. There's a town called Necropolis, which is just all ghouls, which we'll get to ghouls later. I kind of hope we see that because that would be really cool to see. But a lot has happened in this area and we don't know what's going on. If you insist on staying, all this is basically just Lucy traveling through the waste. Have to. Now here we get a one of the supporting characters who might be a, an important character, Michael Emerson. We don't know who he's playing, but Michael Emerson is a very famous actor. He was in Lost, and he is clearly giving Lucy a rousing speech about the wasteland. That is humor. That is sarcasm. The wasteland is not a place to be roused. But either way, he might be a raider. He might be one of the villain groups. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know anything about him. He is giving off some creepy vibes. But we also did see Lucy as well traveling through the wasteland. We saw a beached boat, <laughs> which looked like a fishing vessel of some sort. So that was because of the bombs dropping and everything as well. However, that's another run. That's another thing. Right there, we saw dog meat, or whatever they're going to call them in the show. Dog meat is a long-standing companion in the Fallout franchise. They are one of the many companions you can get in the Fallout games. Dog meat's a dog. <laughs> Just simply put, dog meat is a dog. But they have the title of dog meat, and there has been a dog meat in, I believe, every Fallout game. And they're great. They're just a companion you can just take with you on your journey. They can carry stuff for you. They can attack stuff for you. They're they're wonderful. Everyone loves dogs. <laughs> Everyone loves a dog meat, okay? And we kind of need to have dog meat in the show because it's a, it's a crucial part of Fallout. This right here, I'm just going to stop right here as well just to make reference to this. This is a joke. <laughs> this is a joke. When I when the first when the show first came out, I saw a lot of people like poo-pooing this whole thing and thinking that it was Amazon just being Amazon and being like, hey, buy Prime or whatever, which technically, yes, because you need that to watch the show. But this is also a joke and honestly, a pretty good one as well. That is basically the humor of the Fallout franchise. It is very sarcastic. It is very tongue in cheek. And it is very much like this. It is it is very self-deprecating. That's just how Fallout is. So this is a joke. <laughs> All of this is very cool and I will pause it in just a second. All of this is very very cool and has me very intrigued and very excited given what is being shown. So all of this is the Brotherhood of Steel. Now the Brotherhood of Steel is a very long-standing faction within Fallout. It has become a very prevalent faction since Fallout 3 when Bethesda, Zenimax, and Todd Howard took over the franchise from the PC days to the third-person, first-person shooter days that we now are in. The Brotherhood of Steel are an offshoot faction from the U.S. military that kind of grew from the military post-bombs dropping, and their whole goal is to protect and preserving pre-war technology. However, they also toe the line of being really, really villainous, depending on what game you're playing. Again, just like the Enclave, you can join them. There are definite, like, antagonist groups, they're raiders, but beyond that, every other group you can kind of join if you want. The Brotherhood being one of the main ones, where they are very zealous, very aggressive, and very in their ways of protecting pre-war technology, such as the power armors, this one specifically being a T-60 power armor with the logo of the Brotherhood of Steel on the chest. Also with this, the Brotherhood of Steel is just really cool. <laughs> they are a lot of things. The plane things you see there are called vertebrates. The Brotherhood has them. They were military planes uh, during the war and after the war, so of course they would have them. But also we see our second main character here of Maximus, played by Aaron Moten. Now, Maximus is supposedly going to be a squire of a Brotherhood of Steel knight. Now, this is a new thing, I believe, that is added to the show and to the lore of the, of the Fallout universe, but it's something that also kind of makes sense as well, given the fact that power armor is really big. I know in the games you can put it on yourself, like just step into like an Iron Man armor. In the show, they're going to make it so you have to have like a squire with you to help you don the armor. I'm okay with this. It makes the Brotherhood of uh, Brotherhood Steel a little more like knightly, and they have kind of always felt like that because of the power armors and stuff. Um, especially in, in 3, 4, 76, and so on. So I'm okay with this. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool, and I'm excited to see what they're doing with it. Also, I'm excited to see what Maximus's whole take is on the world 
and how it juxtaposes with Lucy's, where Lucy was in a vault the whole time and happened to acclimate to the wasteland, and Maximus having been on the surface the whole time. So, interesting to see what they do there, but also, following the events of 4, I'm really intrigued to see what they're doing with the Brotherhood of Steel, especially since we haven't seen the West Coast Brotherhood in over 135 years, as I mentioned earlier from the first game. Also, the power armor looks awesome! It, it just looks great. More vault stuff. Clearly some stuff happens in Vault 33, which is why I'm thinking it's a social experiment kind of thing that I'm not, not going to say went wrong because it's the whole point of social experiments, but something clearly happened in the vault and they all start trying to kill each other. Now, what happens, we don't know yet. We'll figure that out in the show. This also probably is why Lucy leaves. This whole part here is a town called Philly, ironically not in Philadelphia, but called Philly, very reminiscent of Megaton from Fallout 3, reminiscent of Diamond City from Fallout 4. It, it's, it's a wasteland city, basically, of survivors that are all stationed there, crafted from scraps, and it's, an, it's a standard thing in Fallout. But I don't want to see tomorrow. And here we get our first look at the last of the main characters, Walton Goggins playing the ghoul. He is the last of the three protagonists, and he looks amazing. Also, it's Walton Goggins, who is just phenomenal anyway. So, ghouls in the game are basically zombies. <laughs> they are really heavily radiated humans that most of them have gone feral, and they are, for all intents and purposes, they are zombies in the Fallout universe. That is the best way to describe them. However, there are rare instances of people who were so irradiated and so mutated that they basically, like, reverted back around to being humans again. I think that's how the logic works in Fallout. Don't quote me on that, but put it in the comments, if you know. But he is one of those, where he has basically looped back around to being a full human. And he also has been alive since the war, like, since the bombs fell, which means he is over 200 years old. That's nuts! But also, he is known as the Ghoul. He is basically a legendary bounty hunter, outlaw-type character who's going to help out the protagonist in some way, shape, or form, and he will also be our view into the pre-war, pre-bomb uh, world, where we'll get to see him at the end of the trailer in his actual human form before he became a ghoul, uh, and his character is named Cooper Howard, which is, I think, going to be a reference to something, because that name is too close to a lot of different other cowboy-ish names. But he is awesome, and also I love the fact that they made him kind of hot. There's a ghoul in Fallout 4 named Hancock, who is basically Revolutionary War attired. He's also kind of hot. It's just a thing that is in Fallout. So just go from there. <laughs> I see also, he is clearly a badass. <laughs> this whole part here is intriguing, given fallout so this is an overseer of one of the vaults we don't know which one yet but it's clearly not vault 33 it is a different vault somewhere out there however this man's a cyclops and as of right now in the fallout games while we have mutated humans we do not have any humans that look like a cyclops that have very physical mutations i am on the i'm on the, the line of thinking that this is a subtle reference to the fallout 76 mutation cards and possibly also a subtle tease to something in Fallout 5 of characters having physical mutations. Given the fact that this is a world that is heavily irradiated, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if we see physical mutations at some point in the canon of Fallout. This might be just the first instance of it. Given that we have so many mutated animals out there in the Fallout universe, it's not surprising to have a mutated human as well. So we'll see what happens here, but he just adds some more comedy to the show. Some of that, you know, Fallout humor. But he's also a Cyclops. That's kind of fun. We see a turret. Those are deadly in the games. We'll do multiple things here. So first of all, this is Overseer Hank. He is the father of Lucy, and he's also played by the wonderful Kyle MacLachlan. He is also the Overseer of Vault 33. He's probably dying here. <laughs> More than likely, he is dying here. Very reminiscent of a scene from, I believe, Fallout 3 with some radiation and stuff. But beyond all that, the other thing that I wanted to pause and talk about is the previous scene where we saw a Mr. Handy robot. Mr. Handys are a class of robot you can find in the game. There are also some, like, Mr. Gutsy, I believe, is another one. They are a various form of robot in the game, and there are more robots than that. 
I'm assuming since we're seeing Mr. Handy, we're going to see other robots in the, in the show. I'm cool with that. I love me some robots in Fallout. They're always fun to find. And the poster, not the poster, the billboard behind there, the advertisement was for Dairy Fresh Ice Cream, which is a thing original to the show as far as I'm aware, but it fits the product placement of Fallout anyway, and it fits the whole universe. So I'm here for it. I'm cool with that. This, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it looks like a mutated axolotl. I don't know. It's some mutated creature. However, the bear thing we saw, that is known as a Yao Guai. Yao Guai are one of the more deadly creatures in Fallout, right there under the Death Claw. Death Claws are really awesome, really badass, and I hope we see at least one in the show. I am sure we will. They are really mutated lizard things that are just demons, basically. <laughs> They're just Fallout mutated demons. They're awesome. But anyway, Yao Guai are heavily mutated bears. They really like to fight, they really are tanky, and they will ruin your day anytime you see them. And they're also named after the fictional uh, internment camps in the games as well, and basically come from a Chinese word, I believe, uh, known as demon. So they're big mutated bears. You don't want to mess with them, as with normal bears. Also, that's just good. More from Ball 33. And then this is the final thing that I will mention in the trailer here is... Cooper Howard, we see him as the bombs are falling. This is a really great scene. However, the thing before that that I will actually pause on, the thing before that is this bad boy right here. So this is an airship, and it's a little bit confusing. So this is clearly Brotherhood of Steel. You can see the vertebrates, you can see them maybe building bombs or whatever. I don't know, but they're doing something here. But you see the airship. As far as we are aware, in Fallout canon, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. As far as we're aware, there's only one airship so far in Fallout canon, and that was the Perdwin from Fallout 4. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it's the one from Fallout 4. It's basically like a mobile air base of the of the Brotherhood of Steel. However, in the events of that game, the lone survivor, uh, your player character, destroys the Perdwin. <laughs> so, while this show does take place nine years after the events of Fallout 4, I'm wondering if they rebuilt the Perdwin, if this is a second airship from somewhere else in the Brotherhood of Steel, if this is a flashback from the events of Fallout 4 or whatever. I don't know. But as far as as far as I know, this is just an airship that we do not have account, uh, an account for. So I'm interested to see what they're doing here. So that is basically the trailer. However, there is one final thing I want to talk about, and that is one of the main things in Fallout is the music. So about halfway through the trailer and then through the end of it, we hear the song I Don't Want to See Tomorrow by Nat King Cole. And that song specifically fits the themes and the tone of Fallout to a perfect T. Because in Fallout, in the universe of the games, basically technology and culture stopped progressing as it did in our world around 1950. So, you know, the nuclear age. It basically hit there and then kind of stagnated for the rest until the bombs dropped. Because of this, culture, music, television, advertisements, all that good stuff, just kind of stayed in the 1950s era, in the Cold War era music being one of the main ones and in the games you can listen to the radio stations one of my favorite things to do in the games and they play a bunch of just 1940s 50s and 60s music um, mainly 40s and 50s music that you can just listen to and it's really fun to listen to there's some absolute bangers in there to from the wasteland in so the fact that they played a nat king cole song fits perfectly with the world of fallout so that's it that's the trailer. That is the trailer for Fallout 4. There's a little bit afterwards with the bombs dropping. It looks very, very cool. The font for the title looks perfect. It is just the Fallout font. I'm really excited for this show. I am very, very excited for the show. As a fan of Fallout, I think they're doing, so far from what we've seen, a great, great job. They showed off a little more footage of the Game Awards. Not too much. Not really enough to talk about here. They did say the iconic line of war. War never changes because that is the big thing from Fallout is the fact that, you know, the war happened, bombs dropped, and then people still fight. That's just the whole deal. Human nature, you know? So I am really excited for this series coming out April 12th, I believe. April of next year sometime. I'm I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. I'm just really excited for it. And so far, it's looking pretty perfect. I know there's, like, some lore issues that people have with the, uh, with the show so far from what we've seen. 
I'm willing to give it a chance and I'm willing to see what they're doing with it, specifically because it is canon to the game timeline and to the game story. I'm interested to see what they're doing with it. So let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of what you've seen in the trailers as well? And are you excited for the show? And let me know your thoughts down below as well. And also, if you're a Fallout fan, what is your favorite Fallout game or moment from one of the games? Specifically, mine is a, an instance in New Vegas where you get the companion of Boone, and he just starts randomly shooting things from like a mile away when you're doing completely other things. <laughs> I love the character of Boone. He is great. So let me know that down in the comments below. And if you like this type of video, this like trailer breakdown thing, let me know that as well. And leave a like on the video if you do like it. It definitely helps out in the algorithm and lets me know the things that you like for the channel. And if you want to see more from the channel as well, you can go ahead and watch some other videos and subscribe as well. That will help out the channel as well and help us grow to a thousand. But if you want to see more from the channel, remember, here's going to be a playlist for something else you can watch. It'll be some other video game adaptation, probably Dragon Age. Which I know is a funny thing because Bethesda, that, that wasn't Bethesda. Anyway, go ahead and watch this. It's great. And if you want to see something else, remember, here's going to be a video that you can recommend for you as well. Until next time, stay Fallouting, everyone, and I'll see you next one. Until then, peace, everyone. Peace.